Wow, it's a <coughs> joy for me to be here. It's my first time here in Davao. So I was told there is a ritual if your first time here. So aside from durian, well, which I love, I have no problem. I think I need to pass by uh, President Duterte's house to say my respects, <laughs> which I'm willing if uh, he will be there. Greetings from uh, Green Hills Christian Fellowship in uh, Metro Manila and the different parts of the world. And on behalf of our senior pastor, Dr. Larry Pabiona, we would like to extend our uh, blessings because we have been involved in a similar ministry like this. Uh, it started with Petra Foundation of Dr. Luis Pantoa, where he gathered uh, pastors and leaders to come from different provinces and to equip them. And not only that, but also to bless them. In fact, one time we asked some brethren from abroad to bring in uh, stuff, books, etc., for the pastors. I think that's one of the vision of the organizers here as well. And then we had purpose and passion. And now I'm here with salt and light, so it's such a joy to be here. But it's not really easy to be here. As you know, I've been in the ministry since 1980. But don't worry, I started as a very young person at 18. So I have been in the ministry for quite a while. So if there's anything that you would love to hear, right? When you are in a conference, for example, like there is a symposium or a conference on drug addiction, you would be eager to hear it from a former drug addict who has been there. So right now we're going to be talking about enjoying your Sabbath. And in front of you, if a man early in the ministry knew how it is to abuse one's body or how it is to neglect the Sabbath. I'm saying that with embarrassment and shame, but at the age of 23, at the age of 23, I had to be given uh, one-fourth of dormicum just to be able to sleep. You know what is dormicum? Dormicum is a sleeping tablet. A 23-year-old guy, I was burning the candles at both ends. I was Grace Bible Church in Manila. I was the uh, head of the missions committee. I was the pastor, teacher, advisor of the young people. Never experienced how to be an officer of the youth because I was the one handling it as a young age. Then I went full-time in the ministry with CGM Action. And we had 18 different ministries in the urban poor. We conduct as many as eight evangelistic camps in a year. 300 people. 300 people, eight times in a year. And I was the dorm supervisor aside from the camp ministry supervisor. So I was the first one to wake up, the last one to sleep. And 7 uh, Eleven became a friend to me <laughs> because that's where I run. And you will hear more of that on the soul care thing. So allow me to lead again in prayer as we ask the Lord's blessing because a lot of women intercessors and brothers are praying for us. And I heard that there are some people somewhere here praying for us as well. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your refreshing visit, Lord, to us. And as we speak of something that is supposed to be passe, it's supposed to be palasak sa aming mga Pilipino. It is supposed to be something common and yet it is the most neglected and abused teaching from your word. We ask that you open our hearts and our minds and thank you because you are ministering not just to the audience, Lord, but first and foremost, Lord, to the speaker. And we thank you for the blessing of knowing your word and that the Holy Spirit will convict us because we pray these things as we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You know, I'm still uh, floating, uh, literally, because uh, my flight was 6.50 a.m. And boarding time is 5.45. So that means I have to be awake at 3 a.m. But prior to this, around midnight, my niece called for the second time my elder sister, who's 61 years old, uh, 
was rushed to the heart center. Uh, she has, I think it's called uh, atrial septal defect, ASD. And the problems in her heart was such that she had to be defibrillated, kukuryentehen, while still conscious. So can you imagine that? And Monday, she w was rushed to the heart center the first time again. And then there were other three pastoral concerned hospitalized people, two of them critical that I have to pray for, and one over the phone asking what is, you know, what is the ethical thing to do with my dad who is in comatose. And the doctor told us, are we going to have an aggressive intervention or are we just going to allow pain management? What are we going to do? It's a very difficult question and I told them there is no plain answer. It's between them and the Lord, but there must be unity among the family. The reason why I'm sharing this to you, this is what is happening in the life of a pastor. We have planned, scheduled activities, right? But also we have what is called unplanned things that as the shepherd or under shepherds of the church, we respond to the needs of the people. And that's where the problems come in. So we will be talking about, oh, I don't see the out. Ah, I cannot see this, but I'm enjoying your, oh. oh, there. Oh, sorry. I'm not, oh, <laughs> enjoying your Sabbath. Oh, okay. In our church, it's summer now. Okay. It's my first time here, and Pastor Jorem and I, we were together in a CGM Action Pastoral care conference, so looking forward to have fellowship with him later. So enjoying your Sabbath, and last year, uh, this was published, a young Japanese reporter died of karoshi, karoshi or overwork, and she is only 31 years old, and look at that, it says Sado, that's her name, logged in 159 hours and 37 minutes in overtime in June. So I try to calculate, that's around 13 hours or 14 hours a day. No day off. And then in May, 146 hours and 57 minutes. But look at that. It is more than exceeding the 100 hours of overtime a month that the national guidelines for determining Karoshi. There is a epidemic in Japan and it's called the Karoshi epidemic because hard work is a virtue. It is a virtue. But the thing is, they overwork. There are also what is called cardboard people. If you go to Japan in the Sabi, you will see people in a coat and tie with an Atashi case sleeping there on the subway, suddenly snapping and losing it. Burning out. Japan was the first country who, you know, you can go to a bar, you pay big bucks, expensive vase will be given to you right there, and then you'll be given a baseball bat, and you will destroy it just to release stress. In fact, it was very funny, if not sad, last year around October, I was visiting somebody, and they were watching CNN, so I was watching CNN. NHK, the uh, Japanese uh, news agency, was telling the news, the news was this. There is a new law in Japan that if you take a vacation, you are not allowed, and the company is not allowed to email you. And I was really smiling, I said, that is news in Japan, they are mandating people to take a break, literally. And the reason why this is important because there are many pastors and leaders who are going through a spiritual karoshi, if I may say. But this is death by karoshi. Unfortunately, some of us who are here, including the one standing before you, is going through that. 
So let's read together. Shall we all stand as we read together a passage in the Scriptures which is very familiar to all of us? It's actually the Ten Commandments, and this is the Fourth Commandment. And let's read this together. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor your any foreigner residing in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Praise God for his word. You may be seated. It is very clear that Jesus said, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Jesus restored its true meaning. The principle of Sabbath is actually for his glory. As we focus on our worship of him, and we receive the gift of rest for our own good. Remember that uh, scene, uh, the disciples were eating corn and a head of kernel, you know, and uh, the Pharisees accused them that they are violating the Sabbath. And of course, the Lord rebuked them by quoting what happened in the Old Testament. And the Lord said that the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. It was made for us, not the other way around. So by the way, we will not be talking about uh, days here. No? Uh, if you came from uh, the Seventh-day Adventist background, uh, by the way, I am a Jewish Seventh-day Baptist as far as food is concerned. Oh. <laughs> I eat like the way they do, you know. It's actually the healthy way. Not for religious reasons, but for health reasons. I'll give you an example. Don't eat fish without scales. Do you know why? Uh, we used to believe that when you eat fish near the shore, that's the dirty, polluted type, right? If you have deep sea fish, that's supposed to be the clean ones. But now they discovered, three decades ago actually they discovered, that those fish, deep sea, who have no scales, have high traces of mercury. So, but that's just a tidbit. If you come back on soul care, I'll share more about that. But it's about health reasons, no? not for religious reasons. So, what is our good? Our good is this, to enjoy the day as we stop from what we are doing for six days, rest from our labor, and worship our Lord. If you will be discerning enough, this is actually the outline, as you could see. If you can name it, if we can name this again, that title was given to me, Enjoying Your Sabbath. But we could have entitled this, Stop, Rest, and Worship. That's what we're going to be doing. But the question is, why do pastors and leaders don't take the Sabbath? Well, for one, bad habit, workaholic. Uh, sometimes workaholic think that it is a virtue. We have a pastor I'm not going to mention. Well, he's a lay pastor. And uh, he confessed to me that his maintenance medicine is a shoe box, a small shoe box. Breakfast, lunch, dinner. He needs to pop medicine. And if you know the father of medicine, Hippocrates, he said, eat food like medicine so that you will not have food as medicine. Now, eat food like medicine. Because if you don't, then medicine will become your food. So it's better to eat food like medicine. Go the natural way. So bad habit, it's a workaholic. And in, in Japan, it's the culture that is bad. The culture that is bad. And uh, if you Google this, that particular person, it's the reason being the parent, the mother in particular, filed a complaint. And the NHK people did not know that uh, 
Sado, Miss Sado died of karoshi, of overwork. So when they found out, they demanded from the companies, this is a huge, it's like CNN in Japan, said, you must disclose. And the president of the company, as you know, Japan, it's a shame culture like us. Uh, so the president came out and uh, apologized to the public and they will try to do something about it. And the mother is now doing that as an advocacy. And I think, I was asking as we were going here, dito po ba sa Davao, especially the elders and deacons who are here, do we have the theology of poverty for pastors here? Na kapag pastor, manggagawa, dapat nagihirap, may sakripisyo. Diba? If you're a pastor, you should be suffering. You should be in need. You should be in turmoil because that is your cross. You're a pastor. You should be poor and unhealthy. Well, no one's... I'm glad you're laughing because it's not supposed to be true. But subconsciously, some people think that way. And if you do think that way, it is not an accident that you are here. It's not an accident po. Poor time management. Uh, unfortunately, some of us, we rely on zeal. And I'm glad that the brother Joel Pranza is into equipping and training. Some pastors need to be trained even on issues like time management. I was just doing my Bible reading uh, the other night, and it was, because I'm going through the Bible again from Genesis to Revelation, it was Moses and Jethro. And Jethro, the uncle, saw Moses, what are you doing? I said, uncle, uh, why? You are wearying the people and yourself, because Jethro, Uncle Jethro saw hundreds if not thousands of people li lining and waiting to get their chance to see Moses, who is the judge, especially in conflict and issues. And Jethro said something, this is what you should do. What you're doing is wrong. It's there, it's wrong. Go and get gifted and qualified men who will be leaders of thousands, of hundreds, of twenties, and of ten. The small decisions, you let them decide. The major ones, they bring to you. And it was Moses, you know, that is fundamental in leadership and management principle, delegation. And some pastors do not even know that word to delegate. If there are things that other people can do, let them do it. Because pastors, you need to do things that they cannot do. So, poor time management and messianic complex. Oh, messianic complex, messianic complex is, there is a need, I must respond. There is a sick person, I need to visit. Everywhere that I'm needed. I was shocked as a young people, as I told you at 18, I was in the ministry, as a young person, I read and I found out as I look at the New Testament that Jesus did not visit everyone. That Jesus did not heal all the sick. All the sick that came to him, but he did not go everywhere visiting the sick. He did not go everywhere healing everyone or counseling everyone. The disciples did some of those things. So it was a shock to me. Jesus did not visit everyone. And yet, we pastors should visit everyone. That is the messianic complex. Sheer volume of work. Uh, well, I was involved in a, uh, well, it's not really a discipline. We confronted the pastor, and uh, the pastor was a full-time pastor of a church. That church has a school. Now, try to think of a, in Manila setting. Just like Solideo, they have a school. Pastor, and it's a church school, same compound. Then he's also the head of a big ministry. I will not mention that ministry. It's a head. So on Tuesday night, when supposed to be visitation night, he's unable because he's physically exhausted already. It's just sheer 
volume of work. And then number five, it seem, it's a burden. It's a burden. Now this one is really a warning because in, in, if you are in love with the world, you will find that rest really is a burden because you will always want to climb the ladder of success. And unfortunately, that is echoed also in the ministry. Your affirmation is in accomplishment of things, especially when you have pastor's conference, like in your denomination, and you are waiting to give a report. So, bad habit, poor time management, messianic complex, sheer volume of work. There is a statistics in 2016 update, and just, this is a surprise, look at that. 54% are overworked and 43% are overstressed. Karoshi. And then 18% work more than 70 hours a week and face unreasonable challenges. Karo Karoshi candidate. This is an American statistics. Can you imagine it is worse here in the Philippines? That is a 2016 thing. And you'll be hearing more of that as we go along, especially in soul care. So now let's look at the heart of God behind the longest of the Ten Commandments, which is the Fourth Commandment. Remember, you know, it says, the keep the Sabbath. This is the clear instruction from God. So by the way, I would like to, you know, let you know that when we do uh, preaching, our senior pastor who learned it from our former senior pastor, Dr. L uh, Luis Pantoa, and now it's Dr. Larry Pabiona. We gather around and discuss the passage and learn from each other. But I must acknowledge the three point alliteration, especially the alliteration, came from Dr. Larry Pabiona. But we, you know, we discussed and, uh, and I improved. Don't tell him, I improved the outline. So. <laughs> The clear instruction was this, remember and keep this day holy. It simply means make this one day unique and distinct and observe the principle of it. This is unique. This is not the same as the other six days. This one is distinct. We know that, right? When you say holy, keep it apart. Set it apart. That's the meaning of that word holy. So remember and keep this day holy. It is a special day. And in fact, if you look at the first, second, third commandment, we realize that we honor God on the first commandment by our loyalty. And the second commandment through our thought life, what we think of God, you know, about idolatry. And then words that we need not use God's name in vain. That's the third commandment. But the fourth is, but also for the use of our time. Our time. God's command about our days reminds us that all our time is His gift to be given back to Him and used for Him and for His glory. That's the clear in instruction. Remember and keep this day holy. By the way, it's good to note that the positive remember to keep it holy, came before the prohibition. And what is the prohibition? It's actually a compassionate imposition in verses 9 and 10. Verses 9 and 10. God is telling us to stop. I'm receiving a prayer support and I am just uh, praising God for that. And a while ago, a uh, group of young people prayed for me. So the youngest was 22, so I feel like a 22-year-old right now, yeah. <laughs> because I was floating a while ago, uh, literally, but the Lord has been so gracious. So six days you shall labor and do all your work. That's verse nine. And 10, it says, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it, you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your manservant or maidservant, nor your animals 
and the alien within your gates. So the compassionate imposition is this. You work for six days. You do ministry for six days. You do business for six days. You do corporate work for six days. You do Uber driving for six days. But on the seventh, you rest. Please don't ask me later about what is the seventh day? Is it Sabbath, the Sabado? You know, 6 p.m. of Friday? Up? No, we're not talking about the day here. We're talking about the principle of rest. Because as you know, uh, in Israel, it's a different day right now. And in some countries, literally Sunday is a day of work. So we're not going to talk about days. We're going to talk about the principle behind Sabbath. So here is the compassionate imposition. It's compassionate because there is something good that's going to come out of it. You work for six days and rest on the seven. I learned from a Indian brother, 777, which I'll be, well, this is a, a four days of soul care, 77. Seven days, one day rest. Seven weeks, one weekend. Seven months, one week. He follows that and that's a good uh, model to follow. But why did God give us the Sabbath? Bakit nga ba tayo binigyan ng Sabbath? Because it is a gift for our good. A day to stop. Stop from labor and rest and worship. Stop, rest, and worship. God designed us this way. We need the Sabbath. God is fully aware that we couldn't survive without it. If you don't take a break, you'll just break. And if you don't take a Sabbath voluntarily, you will take it involuntarily. How do you take a Sabbath involuntarily? Hospital. <laughs> or church discipline. In the French Revolution from 1700s to 1800s up to 1900s, the French Revolution, when the... Uh, there was a, a fight of ideology, it was violent, it was war. But you know, one of the things that they imposed, this is unbelievable, I, I really researched it because uh, this was mentioned and that they, what they did because they desired to improve after the French Revolution, so around 1880, they put on a seven day work week. Seven day work week. In fact, during the French Revolution, several times, they tried to put a new calendar, a 10-day week calendar, seven-day work week, no Sunday off, no Saturday off. And in less than six months before the time that they were doing this experiment, they realized that productivity went down instead of going up. Do you know that the concept of rest, the one seven, is even in nature, it is there. But even in our lifestyle, you notice, uh, have you heard of the parable of the lumberjack? The parable of the lumberjack. Lumberjack A is cutting trees. They were cutting trees with ax. And he is doing it nonstop. Lumberjack B was cutting trees as well at the same time with A, but he was resting, taking breaks, I think three times within the day. At the end of the day, Lumberjack A was surprised because Lumberjack B cut more trees than he did. So he said, how come you cut more trees than I did? When you were resting, I was not. And listen to this, the answer of the lumberjack be, because when I rest, I sharpen my ax. That's both literal 
and symbolical. When you rest, you sharpen your axe. Do you know the, re the, the science behind recreation? I didn't realize the science behind recreation is we use a certain part of our brain, and if I may say muscles, for six days. The way we work, if you are the desk type, type of a job, you probably have a carpal syndrome problem, you know, holding that mouse or a back problem, etc. So that's particular. How come you notice you're in the office and then I uh, want you to know the one of the heads of the Tariela uh, law firm, attorney Ed Tariela, is married to Flor Goson Tariela. Flor Goson Tariela is the brother of the Channel 7 owner, no, they're the co-owners of Channel 7. She is the chairman of PNB. Chairman of PNB. Or chairwoman, if I may say. Uh, Sister Floor. Both of them. Sister Floor is into gardening. It was called Floor's Garden. And Attorney Etariela is into farming. That's why in the same place up near the Tats of Glory Prayer Mountain, you have Floor's Garden. And she was featured in Channel 7 many times and in Channel 2. Actually, more times in Channel 2 than Channel 7. Uh, because he is into weeds that can be eaten, weedables, he calls it, and even flowers. And he said no Filipino should uh, die of hunger because KKMS, you know, yung kangkong, kamote, talbos, malunggay, seal, all, all these things. Do you have enough nutrients to sustain you, right? So she was teaching that. And it's really amazing that, you know, when you do farming and sometimes you sweat than when you do office work and you're supposed to be resting, but you use another part of your brain. You use another parts of your muscles. And because of that, the other part is actually resting and the other part is revitalized. If you know some bodybuilders who are not properly guided, you see some bodybuilders, their upper body is so big, you know, and their, <laughs> their feet are so tiny because it, I guess there was no coats because there is a proper way to do it. You're supposed to be balancing. That's the same way, the concept of rest. The rest is simply trying to balance everything. It's there in nature. And here is something really amazing. The cryo, it is chronobiology. Dr. Hardberg, they discovered, uh, well, this is quite say, I know, a technical and scientific, but let me just explain it to you. Uh, it simply says they found out that in the animal kingdom and in plants, there is a seven-day cycle. They rest, and, and he was explaining in bio, this, this is not biorhythm, that, because that is uh, another story that's not scientific, but this is chronobio, chronobiological rhythm. Every seventh day, there is some kind of rest, and even in plants. So it's there in nature. So that is the imposition. And God gave it to us, because if you don't, you will break if you don't take a break. And, uh, you know, one of the things that I discovered, and I say I discovered because when you fall in the area of taking your Sabbath, your rest, there are other things that will follow. If you're a married person, where do you think you are most irritable? and easily angry with, yeah? at home. It's like uh, you're driving to the church. I told you to do this. I told you a hundred times, don't play computer game. And then when you enter the church, <clears throat> hello, uh, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Parang transformer. I'm sorry because I don't think it's up. Yeah. Ah, hello, hi. Diba? It's like transformer. Like that transform. And some pastors are like that. And leaders. 
And I'll tell you later on our final thoughts the importance of doing Sabbath. In fact, I, you know, when I was preparing and then I looked at, then later on, they showed me the program and the different topics. I said, oh my, because you know, this entire thing actually is about soul care. What you heard a while ago about the basics. And this is actually part of the basics. Taking rest. Look at that. In Leviticus 23, 3, calls the Sabbath a day of sacred assembly, a time for God's people to gather, worship, a day to pray. In Luke 4, 16, Jesus on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue. As was his custom, he stood up and read. He stood up to read. Jesus observed the Sabbath by going to church. That's the best expression of Sabbath when we go having fellowship with our believers. But the thing with pastors is, especially for those in mega churches, it's a whole day thing. Now, how many of you are in a church above 200 attendees? Above 200 attendees. Oh, yeah. And oh, below 100. Below 100. Oh, purihin kayo. Praise God for you. You are blessed because you have a family, right? But uh, do you know that John Calvin, how he does his Sabbath? After preaching in the morning, he would invite his uh, members to go, you know what? Bowling on a Sunday. But if you're in a mega church such as this, you have two services. In ours, we have four. I tried preaching four times, it's really, by the second preaching, you are almost gone. You know? <laughs> then you take a chest, then third and fourth. And we have to be there 8 a.m. and we have to end the service. It ends around 7.30, so at 8 p.m. That's our life. So our children also is at home already in church. Can you imagine the whole day you're in air condition and you can play computer games? No, but they're into, uh, they have different ministries there, but the entire day. So it's hard. Uh, part of the Sunday can be, in fact, one time what we do just to really fight, you know, for our Sabbath when the day is done. And uh, because one of the things that we do in church after each service, we stand in front, all the pastors stand in front, and people come for prayer. So I have, most of the time I'm the one we have because my, my passion is pastoral care. So what we do at the end, especially if there's a special movie that we need to watch, and I recommend to you The Greatest Showman. If you have not seen that, if you're a pastor, you're a father, that is a highly recommended film. I think that is going to replace the sound of music in the next generation. It is going to be a classic. The music is superb. The story, the moral lessons are good. So what's the greatest showman after your Sunday service? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's really a beautiful. So sometimes we fight, but the compassionate imposition is stop. Stop. The usual thing you used to stop. And that is so hard for a pastor. Ah, so hard to, for a pastor because you're telling me to stop when my responsibility as a shepherd is 24-7. You're the head of a pastor of a church and you have a school, right, Pastor Jorem? You have a school. Can you imagine? You know, the parents of a, of a school are very cooperative, very supportive parents, right? We don't have problems with parents in school. Ama po ba? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But really, it's the demands of people. Pastoral care, when somebody texts you, there is no day off. Really, we say there is no day off. And uh, I remember my first, my second bout on, uh, well, this is for soul care, but uh, the difficulty, you know, have you, has it happened to you, pastors? You are lecturing like this, and... And you're doing like this. That's happened to me. Or worse, you're counseling. Yeah? 
ya. Yes po, yes po. <laughs> and it's really embarrassing. And buti lang umiiyak. You know, kasi hindi niya masyado napapansin. <laughs> but the compassionate imposition is stop! Pastors, you're being told, this is in the imperative mood. Stop! Stop from the usual work. Stop from the routine. Stop from the work. Stop from the ministry. For a day. For a day. In fact, we need to re listen to this because of the Creator's intention. In verse 11. <clears throat> the Creator's intention, it's very clear here that When you stop from work, and he gave us the reason why we need to do that, to stop from work because for in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. So the Creator's intention is what? God rested, not because he got tired, but because the welfare of his people was on his mind from the very beginning. Can you imagine that? God created Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. All the beautiful things, animals and plants, flora and fauna, the entire earth and the universe. Then on the seventh day, or rather the sixth day, he created man. And man woke up. It's not good for him to be alone. God put him to sleep. Then God brought the woman. He woke up and he saw this creature and he said, Wow, man! That's why she's called woman. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and then God said, It is very good. After man and woman was, were created, God said, It is very good. He rested to look at his creation, the finished work. The fully satisfying finished creation of God. It's such a beautiful thing. You know, when I had the opportunity to go to the States, they would always want to bring me, Pastor, you want to go Disneyland? Or you're no, 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 no. I want to go to the Grand Canyon. I want to go to the Corridor of the Giants. You know, the Sequoia Trees. And those are the places I want to visit. I'm not interested to go to, you know, to those theme parks, especially if you're alone. You'll be lonely as a father. You know, I remember my wife and I remember my kids. But the intention was from the beginning for our own good. But first and foremost, he rested because he was savoring the creation. And the thing is, before he created these things, guess what? He had us in mind. God what an astounding thought that the God of the universe valued us so much. He loved us before he made everything come to existence. And that is exactly the thought behind Ephesians 4. In fact, if you read that, let's go there. It's a beautiful passage to read. Ephesians chapter 4. Or rather, Ephesians 1. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world. Did you see that? Before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. Wow. Isn't that amazing? It's really an astounding thought when he was creating, he was thinking of us. So when God rested... He was enjoying already his creation. And part of that is man enjoying the creation that God has made for him. Have you thought of that? That the creation from Monday to Friday was for us? And we're supposed to be in charge? Someday we're going back. So for those of you who do not like farming and agriculture, I have news for you. In the new heaven and earth, I think that's what we will be doing. <laughs> No, but we will have trees that will have fruit, I don't know. But I think we can still eat, but uh, we don't have to, but 
I think we can still eat. But that's another topic. <laughs> so, God blessed and made it holy. He made it a source of blessing and a day to worship. Did you see that part, you know, as we go back there? It's really amazing. You know, when you look at the scriptures, it's, it's really a blessing if you look, it, look at it intently. He said, therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. The blessing included in it making it holy. The making it holy included in it the blessing. They go together. When God blesses a lamb, rich blessings come from it. When God blesses Israel, rich blessings come. When God blesses our Sabbath day, rich blessings come to us. It's amazing. It's what hard-headed people like me have often overlooked. It's really amazing. You know the ditch digger cycle? You dig a ditch to earn a living so that you can sustain yourself, so that you can dig a ditch, to dig a ditch, to, sustain, to earn a living so that you can sustain yourself, so that you can dig a ditch. It's an ending. And, uh, well, I would not mention what ethnic group, but we had discussions in college. We did a paper that some parts of our Filipino people, they really work hard. No day off and anything. And then we were discussing, but at the end of the day, you know, they're really businessmen, they have wealth, and now they're using their money for medical expenses. In fact, it was somebody, it's not Bill Gates, but a billionaire came and saw a fisherman who was on a hammock playing guitar. And he said, sir, are you a fisherman? Ah, oh, yes, sir, I am. So he was playing guitar. And uh, this is a foreigner talking to a Filipino. He said, oh, uh, you're finished fishing? Yes, sir, I am. You know what? If you continue to fish, you'll probably get more. And you get more fish, you'll be able to buy a bigger boat. Then you can fish for more, and when you fish for more, then you can buy a much bigger boat. And then when you continue to fish and fish, you'll probably be able to buy a deep sea trawler. When you continue to fish and fish and fish, then you'll be able to buy and put up some canneries and ice plants and stuff. Then you'll be able to rest. You know, like under a coconut tree, singing your favorite song. And the fisherman said, Sir, what do you think I'm doing right now? <laughs> Isn't that wisdom? Proverbs said, The rich can pay ransom but the sleep of a laborer is sweet. Did you hear that? The rich can pay ransom, but the sleep of a laborer is sweet. You go to a construction site, 12 to 1. What do you see? Construction site, what do you see? Laborers, wooden plank on the uh, hollow blocks, sleeping. 12 to 1. Can you imagine? How can you sleep? On cement, how can you sleep on wooden plank? Humihilik pa. And yet, the rich people, they need to get a doctor's prescription to take tranquilizer. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Because God designed us. It is for our own good. In fact, it is very good. When you make your Sabbath holy by worshiping Him, you receive more blessings than when you keep working for seven days. If you read that again, verse 11, the last part, Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. So the blessing included to make it holy. Making it holy included blessings. 
So when God bless your rest day and you avail of it, rich blessings come from you. And it's like magic. You know, some people think, wow, I rest and I'm stronger. You know, the, it's like I rest, you become stronger. In fact, that is the principle in bodybuilding. Well, I ran. Part of my midlife crisis uh, issues and to cope, I ran. And there are ways to do it, proper ways. I didn't realize it's, I have to in, enroll in a school to really know how to run, uh, especially running a marathon. And the resting day is important. There is a phenomenon they discovered two years ago, and most of the patients are, uh, is called deep uh, speed cycling, you know, those stationary cycling. And the coach is very good, the music is very good, said, you know, yeah, go, let's go, go, pump, do it, go, pump, pump, pump. And they, mom, and, they, and it's all body workout. But what happened to the, you know, to their shock, some of them, when they go to the comfort room, they feel pain and they urinate blood. And the diagnosis was, they actually, their muscle mass wasted away. They overexerted. Because what this, and not all, uh, cycling shelves, because there might be a cycling coach here. It's not individualized, it's in a group. So a newbie will come along with the others and would overexert. The muscle, you know those who people work out to pump iron, if they do not know how to rest, they will waste their muscles. And literally, it will dissolve in a sense and you will be peeing you know, with blood in it. The concept of rest. When you do, you know, those who, are, who know how to do pump iron, you do 12 repetitions, you rest. And said, no pain, no gain. No, that is wrong in uh, athletics and even in physical training. When you feel pain, you better stop. You don't continue on. So it's really a, a beautiful concept, and now scientifically it is being proven to be true. Shasta was disdained by the Fortune 500 companies. It's you know, the habit of lazy people. Then they discovered that a 15 minute or 30 minute nap during lunch time is equivalent of a four hour sleep at night. But they were so proud, they don't want to call it siesta. They call it power nap. <laughs> power nap. And now Fortune 500 companies, they shut off lights 12 to one. It's up to you if you want to work. Google, one of the top companies, they have what, what do they have? Sleeping pods. You will not be given a memo if the supervisor of your head finds you sleeping on a sleeping pod. Because they value rest. They know that the people in the IT business have a different kind of schedule. And they, if, they are, if you are refreshed, you can think well. You can generate things well. No. Have you ever experienced, you know, writing, like you're studying, writing like this, and then? <laughs> really, I woke up and there was a, a long line going down. Wow, that's fatigue. It's, it really means it's time to stop. That's the creator's intention. Now let's look at the life applications. Enjoy! Your Sabbath, the Christian Sabbath, while not restricted to Sunday, it is still a day to stop, rest, and worship. Enjoy it. Look, this verse probably many uh, preachings about the Sabbath forgot this passage. And let's read this together. If you keep your feet from breaking the Sabbath and from doing as you please on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight, and the Lord's holy day honorable. And if you honor it by not going your own way and not doing as you please or speaking idle words, then you will find your joy in the Lord and I will cause you to ride in triumph 
on the heights of the land and to feast on the inheritance of your father Jacob for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Did you see that? The joy of the Lord you will find. You know, you rest. You lie down on the sofa. You read a good Christian book or you listen to Christian music. Whatever form of rest you... Some people find rest just at home and doing nothing. That's rest. Uh, Mrs. Wesley, who had what? 16 children? You know, she would put her apron on her, over her head. And all the boys, including John Wesley and Charles Wesley, know mama is resting or praying. So they will tiptoe in whatever form. But scientifically, going outdoors is restful and rejuvenating for us. You know, when I... And they said we were landing, and then I looked down and I saw all the green here in Davao. I, I was so happy. For 12 years, we lived in a house with tree. There is a mango tree. It's an owned by uh, an elder. I was able to plant two artist trees. This is in Mandaluyong City in Metro Manila. I planted two artist trees. Oh, it's sweet. Oh, man, really sweet. Then I planted dayap and then some bananas at the back. Last September, the son wanted to use the house. So for 12 years, can you imagine? So I miss our trees. And now at this age, I wanted, and I'm praying to the Lord, Lord, I'm praying for a house with a tree. That's my prayer, really, a house with a tree. So right now we are renting a place of action, an action office. There is a ornamental tree, you know. And I'm really struggling because the birds are not even going. It's really, but really seriously, I'm praying. I said, Lord, why am I only having this burden now when I'm maturing in AIDS? And I realized, because I've been transferring from one ministry to another since I was 18. But now I, wanted, I want a house with a tree. So if you know somebody who is uh, having a problem with paying their bank loan, Mariri Matana, I was told there's a win-win solution if they sell the property. Kaya lang hindi po sa Davao, pwede po bang sa Mandaluyo. <laughs> but here in Davao, you are blessed. You're not even aware that when you go out, you see those trees, you're not even aware it's rejuvenating you. It's rejuvenating you. You know, part of the things that we do, we run. You know where I run? At the National Center for Mental Health. No, but it's, it's made by the Americans. It's like UP, like Teacher's Village that is a little bit smaller. It's a bird sanctuary. By bird sanctuary, there's so many, uh, you know, mature trees there. And it's open for public for running. In fact, when, you know, I realized when I run and I sweat, I get refreshed. And you are among trees. So I was running there one time and then uh, somebody, hey, handsome. You know, so... Part of the accountability that I should have, I should tell my wife. So I told my wife, sweetheart, sama ka. So, sama kami, takbo. Pagdating namin dun, wala. No. And then my wife said, magaling na, na-discharge na. <laughs> I said, sweet. So, I ran. I ran. Ran kami. Eh, we went back. Same spot. Same spot. Suddenly, same spot. Somebody, hoy miss, ang ganda nyo naman, yung legs nyo parang bagong balat na singkamas. So I said, sweetheart, si Matino. <laughs> Matino. <laughs> but you know, it's, please appreciate your blessings here in Davao. You know, go to the beach, God's creation, see it. The blue moon, did you see the super blue moon? Did you see it? Isn't that amazing? Of course, when you see it in Facebook, it seems to be better. Kasi ang liit ng ano eh, unless you have a telescope. But enjoy it. Look, the joy of the Lord, you will find. You will find the joy of the Lord. It's really amazing. So, in practical ways, stop. Cease from your labor. Stop. Stop. Subukan nyo. Stop. If you need to ask permission, if you're in a company that does not have a structure, you better ask for one. If you're in a business, that you said, you are in control of time. The problem with this, you're in control of time. There is no control. 
right? Because any day is business day. And the thing with ministry is any day. To the elders and deacons who are here, please mandate your pastors to take days off and spread the word. A day off is a day off. You know, Howard Hendricks, one of my favorite professors, was asked to speak in a conference, and I said, oh, I said, you look at that, uh, I'm playing basketball with my kids. What? Brother Howard, you're not going to preach the Bible to these hundreds of people to play basketball with kids? Yeah, I'm not going to play. I'm, play, I'm not going to preach to them because I'm going to preach the Word of God to my kids by playing basketball to them with them, right? So elders and deacons who are here, leaders, your pastors need a day off. They need a break. There are things that you are, they are beyond, like Christmas season, I realize that. And that's why, you know, at my age, if you are 30 and above, you already know the season, the pattern, even your life, your physiological life. So Christmas, what I do as a practice, December, November, either during the November one thing or last week, I take a vacation in preparation for December. Last year, I told verbally my superior that I will do it. I was not able to do it. December, I got sick. It's a pattern. I already know. You know, if you have been not sleeping for three days, what do you expect the next going to happen? You pray, in the name of Jesus, this demon of migraine on my head, I pray. Come on. <laughs> it's not a demon, it's you. <laughs> it's you. So stop. Cease from your labor. Secondly, rest. Get charged, recharge rather, on your Sabbath day. Rest. When you rest, you have the license not to do anything. But rest for some people like me, I rest, I tinker at the house, I clean, I repair. It's rest for me, I sweat it out. I wash, I do gardening, that's rest. But to some people, it may be a literal rest that physically really have to not to do anything. That's good. I know some people who would sleep the entire day. Yeah, do that. Because if you lack sleep for several days, that is bad for you. And lastly, of course, worship Him. Enjoy Him your Creator, Savior, and Lord, and enjoy His creation. Go out. You know, vitamin D is needed in your body. You're not even aware by going out, exposing yourself, you're getting nutrients. It's called vitamin D. The exposure, your eyes, the different, this, the green thing, the sky, the blue. Scientifically, if you Google it, I don't have, I didn't have, don't have time enough to explain. It is beneficial. The scientists who are, do not believe in God are telling us it's beneficial for you. Rest and rest. So final thoughts. Enjoy your Sabbath. It will keep you healthier, saner, and hopefully even holier. See it for what it really is. It is a gift from God for our good. Imagine you received a gift. You know, like you receive a brand new car, you're not even using it. It's an insult to God. The best way to appreciate a gift is to use it. When you take your Sabbath, this is the other thing. Make sure you bless your family. They should also have a Sabbath like you do, or if I may say to some pastors who are burning out, to have a Sabbath from you. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, the light that shines farthest shines brightest at home. The light that shines farthest shines brightest at home. If you are doing ministry, blessing other people, sharing the gospel, sharing God's word, you should do more at home. You should do more at home. Because when your wife is blessed and your children are blessed, 
truly you will be enjoying your Sabbath. Good morning and God bless you and see you tomorrow. God bless you both. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you as we are refreshed and encouraged. But Lord, for some of us here, I pray in Jesus' name, those who need to stop, Lord, will you help them have the courage to stop and cease from labor. Those who need to rest, who are, Lord, in the brink of a medical emergency, Lord, have mercy on them. This is not an accident. You are here. God is speaking to you. Stop and rest and enjoy the Lord's gift for you, for your own good. Lord, forgive us. This is the most abused commandment that you have given us. You rest, and yet we don't. The Messiah did not do everything, and yet we think we can do everything. Lord, forgive us that when there is a need, we think that we are the only one who can respond to that need. Lord, forgive us for that messianic complex. And Lord, we ask for your guidance. Lord, help us to recover. And Lord, for the leaders who are here, Lord, forgive us as well if we look at our pastors and think that they are supermen and women. Lord, allow us to see that they are flesh and blood as well, Lord. They need to rest. They need to obey God's word as well, like we do. Lord, help us to be wise men. Absorb your word, learn it, and then apply it. So indeed, by your grace, we will be enjoying our Sabbath in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.